Hey everyone, I haven't done an unexpected mail in ages, so I'm sure I'm going to be rusty at it. Excuse my fumbling. I wanted to show you this package. I want to show you what's inside the package, but I wanted to point out the package first. This might give a bit of an indication on what I'm about to show. This was shipped to me on Monday from Sydney, and I had it shipped express post. I understand that Australia Post don't ship next day anymore because of the pandemic, but it didn't arrive to me until Friday afternoon. <laughs> That's pretty long for express post, and it disappeared during tracking for a while and I've discovered why. So, if I turn it over, this is the state that the package arrived in and I've never seen this before. So the package is, the box is completely ripped all the way around and there's a, a massive hole over here and there's a sticker here that says received in this condition Oakley South Post Delivery Center, the date, and then all this tape on it says repaired by Australia Post, repaired by Australia Post. So something happened to this box during shipment and I don't know what, and it's clearly been opened because the existing tape that was closing it has been cut and the box has been fixed somehow. I don't know the state of what's inside. This came from Core Electronics. I have spoken to them about it. They, know, they understand what state it's in and they know I'm gonna be making a video about it. But yeah, I've never seen Australia Post try to repair a box before. And I'd love to know what happened to it to get it into this state. Because there's different rips in different places and a big hole <laughs> that's got like five layers of tape over it. So yeah, fingers crossed that everything inside it is A-OK. -okay. If not, Core Electronics already said they'll ship me out replacement straight away. Here we go. Maybe should have got a sharper knife. Okay. It all looks good though, as I thought it would. So, let's get the box out of the way and have a look at all the goodies I bought. Stick this on there as well. Core Electronics, company I use to buy all my Raspberry Pi stuff and more. From. I'm just going to cut this. I'm not even going to bother trying to find where it opens from. It's goody time. Yay. Okay, that pie box looked like it might have got scratched. So, I have a Raspberry Pi high quality camera. The regulars on my channel and on my streams will know that I was looking at getting one of these to play around with with my optical inspection idea that I've got. I've got a HDMI cable so I can plug a monitor into a Raspberry Pi 4. I've got a Raspberry Pi official power supply. I like using the official ones. I know you can probably get cheaper ones but I'm happy with the official ones. I've got myself another Raspberry Pi 4. This one's got 4 gig of RAM. And I've got, oh, and some extra goodies, I'll, I'll do those in a moment. I've got myself a case, one of the Argon cases. This is the model that doesn't support the uh, M.2 on the bottom. I didn't need that. I don't plan on running uh, M.2 flash drive on the bottom of my Pi. But yeah, these cases look awesome. And um, this Pi is going to go in that case. Woo! We'll get to those two in a second as well. So for the camera, I've got two lenses. I've got the, oh, get it out. I believe this is the wide angle lens. I, I believe. And this one is the zoom lens. So I got both because I want to use the zoom lens for my optical inspection, but if the zoom lens doesn't work out, if the optical inspection project really doesn't go anywhere, I still want to use this new camera. And so I thought I might be able to use this camera in my garage with a wide angle lens to be able to get a really good view of what's happening in there. Wow, these lenses are pretty nice. Okay, so I'll put those away. The mess I'm making on the table here, everywhere. 
I mentioned on my stream that I picked up one of the uh, MPR121 breakout boards from Adafruit. I got that through Core Electronics as well because they are an Adafruit distributor here in Australia. Can't really see it. So I'm using the MPR121, which is a touch, a capacitive touch IC, uh, I2C based on my Tiny Pico Play Shield Revision 2. And I thought I'd get a breakout board to experiment with just to be able to test and write code on in case I have any issues with my Play Shield and then have to debug it. It's much harder to debug on a non-working board. So that's what this module is for. And I believe it gives me 13 touch inputs. But the thing I'm really excited about is I got one of the Adafruit voice bonnets for the Raspberry Pi. So Adafruit have not had this in stock for a while and I didn't realize that Core Electronics had bought a whole bunch of them and they went in stock last week when I ordered. And so I got one of these as well. Again, for those that have been following the garage journey and my wheel holder journey, I am interested to see if I can connect this to a Pi and then use this to teach it my own voice to see if I can use voice control to control the Pi to be able to select real locations on a real rack. This is really for experimentation. The ultimate plan, if I do this, would be to have mouse control on an interface, touch screen for the interface as well, and have voice. And so if voice doesn't work, I can fall back to touch screen. And of course, if I don't buy a touch screen, I can just use a normal mouse. So the camera and the lenses are for my optical inspection project, this Pi and the case and the bonnet and the power supply are for my garage for a Raspberry Pi PC to live in the garage. Same with the HDMI cable and then the NPR121 module is for my experimenting and debugging for my Tiny Pico Play Shield. Now if I move all that away, right now Here's the Raspberry Pi. I am using also a Pi 4, uh, just a 2 gig model for my optical inspection. And I'm just using one of the V2.1 Raspberry Pi cameras, as you can see here. And that is designed to just sit like this. The uh, NeoPixel cables are a little bit short. I've got a NeoPixel ring inside here just to add some extra lighting. It's really not a great solution for doing the rim lighting, it's very sharp. It needs a lot of diffusing. I need to get something better than this, but this is really just for experimentation right now. And so the idea is that that sits like that, and then a PCB of whatever design would go inside there, and the camera would be looking down, photograph what's underneath there, do some vision type enhancements on the image, and then try to work out if all of my components have been placed correctly or not. This camera isn't ideal. It's not uh, very high res. It's about uh, eight megapixel. And I needed something that was more high res and that I had the ability to focus better. And that's why I've gone for the high quality camera. So the high quality camera obviously needs a completely different type of connection. Would sit here. We'll just move that out of the way. A high quality camera would sit here with a, or much higher actually, with a zoom lens. The higher I get the camera using a zoom lens, the straighter the image will be, the less distortion I get around the fringes. So one of the issues with this system right now is that the angle of the lens means I get distortion around the outside of the components. The idea is to not look at one board at a time but to look at a whole panel and be able to check the whole panel. So distance with a zoom lens, I, I can go further away. The further away I go and the more I zoom, the straighter the vision is, the more parallel the vision is. Where with a wide angle lens, the closer you get with a wide angle, the more distorted the outside is. So that's the stash. Pretty cool, I'm very excited. I don't know when I'm going to get to play with this, but I'm quite excited about playing with the voice bonnet. I think Sean Heimel did some introductory Raspberry Pi voice type uh, detection on one of his videos, or he, he did a couple of videos about it. I have a, I've had a quick skim over them, 
I intend to uh, do a lot more learning in this space. I haven't really done anything to do with machine learning or vision or anything else really. So this gives me a project to work on for voice. This gives me a project to work on for vision. And I'm going to do it all on a Raspberry Pi. So that's it. That's my haul for today. Thank you for watching. Big shout out to Core Electronics for being an, an awesome distributor and keeping all this stuff in stock. And I'm really glad that none of this was damaged during shipping. I hope to catch many of you on my live stream next week. I stream every Wednesday morning for me or Tuesday evening or afternoon for everyone else around the world. I live in the future. Please join me on the live streams. I hope next week I'll be putting together my first revision two of my play shield if my NPR 121s arrive from LCSC in time. Otherwise, I will catch you all later. Bye.